Good evening. Welcome to Riding Shotgun. It is Wednesday, July 18th. And um, Alfie's along for the ride. She's way out front, man. She's she's ready. Um, be, be interesting to see how it is back here. I did not get stuck in the mud for those of you who were betting that I did the last time. Almost, yes. <laughs> but uh, got through there and I should be drier now and uh, man the beans are getting big holy cow um, I hope you're all doing great uh, everything's good here people ask me about how you like in retirement I tell them so far so good I mean it is just a ball and um, there's plenty to do there's so much to do I don't know how I ever had time for work I heard that said many times and kind of wondered if it was any truth to it there's a lot of truth to it um, but um, I'm going to be busy this week. Um, Joey Wagner, who's covering Illinois for the Herald and Review now, is going to be the best man in a wedding, and he's had that plan for a long time. So when they announced that this Saturday night would be a reunion of the team that in the 2007 season won the right to go to the Rose Bowl and played on New Year's Day 2008, um, and that will be fun. Ron Zook will be back. Juice Williams will be back. I mean, a lot of guys uh, on that team. Uh, Britt Miller from here in Decatur. Uh, Jay Layman's on that team. I mean, it's going to be very cool to see some of those guys. And I know John Asamoah is coming. Uh, guys that you, that I covered and were you know were fun to talk to, and some of whom have had pro success. Um, uh, you know, Rashard Mendenhall uh, will be there, I'm told. And, um, oh, it's just going to be a lot of fun to see those guys. It'll be fun to see Coach Zook, too. You know, he's been with the Packers now for a while. And um, I hear those guys reminisce a little bit about that season. And, you know, when you think about that season, you think about um, the, the Ohio State game. But, you know, that season started uh, down in St. Louis with a 40-30 loss to Missouri. And, um, and um and then they rattled off five wins in a row. You know, the, the year before, I think they'd only won, what, two games the year before? Um, we, I, you know, we thought they'd be better, but... Uh, so they won five in a row, so they were five and one, and they went to Iowa, and they lost a tough one in Iowa, 10-6, to six, um, and then came back to Champaign, I believe, if my memory's correct, and lost another tough one to Michigan, 27-17, um, and then had and then won two in a row, and then came the showdown in Columbus, where Ohio State was unbeaten. Ohio State was ranked number one in the country, and um, and you know this was another one of those games where Illinois played really at their best in Columbus. They've done that a few times. They've had upsets there. This was certainly one, and um, you know the the. Not the play, but the the uh, <coughs> excuse me, good lord, the uh, the possession uh, that people will always talk about because it was a, a little bit controversial at the time was at the end of the game. Illinois was up uh, 28, 21, and Ohio State just looked like they were you know they'll come up with a third down stop, they'll get the ball back, and then they'll have a shot to come down and and either uh, tie the game or go for two and win it. And, um, and But Juice Williams just kept picking up tough first downs, man. He was a, he was a, he was a fullback that day. And, um, and then, of course, it came to a fourth down and in inches situation. And um, Zook was going to punt the ball. And Ohio State called timeout. And it bought Illinois some time. And it bought, really, Juice Williams a chance to lobby uh, for um, letting him try to pick up that first down. And uh, Coach Zook said, all right, you know, but you better make it. And Juice did. And they ended up uh, controlling the ball for the final eight-plus minutes of the game. Ohio State never got it back. And Illinois won 28-21 to and went to the Rose Bowl. I think they finished the season with a victory over Northwestern but then went to the Rose Bowl, and Ohio State didn't get hurt by that. Um, they uh, ended up playing for the national championship, and um, so everybody got, you know, something out of it. And I remember the Rose Bowl trip so well. That was just a, a lot of fun. 
and uh, you know they have that beef bowl or whatever they call it which is both teams gather at Lowry's prime rib and and they see who can eat the most chow and then they have a they have a media meal there too which was great everybody got a slab of prime rib and I believe it was mashed potatoes and corn is, is what I recall eating there at Lowry's and um, it was just fun the whole week was fun and the day of the game was fun too right up until the game <laughs> and early on Illinois was still kind of in it you know Richard Mendenhall ripped off a long run and and Illinois was driving I think they were down hmm, were they down I don't remember what they were down at the time but it was they had a chance to to um, to get down there and 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 hang with them a little bit and as it turned out uh, they Illinois turned the ball over I believe they fumbled it away and Ohio and USC just I mean they they had w way too much firepower Illinois could not stop them they ended up winning the game 49 to 17 and um, but it was it's a great experience to go to a Rose Bowl game and great experience for those kids and and uh, I remember you know Jay Lehman afterwards and Britt Miller afterwards and you know I mean some of those guys were they were all disappointed they hadn't played better obviously but I think they also recognize that man this is this is what you should be in it for is to get into a game like this you know and, um, and that's what they're trying to get back to those bowl games are memorable they're great for players and coaches and media they're great for fans who can afford to carve out a little time and make a bowl trip you know, I met so many fans on bowl trips over the years, and, and yet it seems like forever since we've, we've been to one. So that will be a lot of fun on Saturday. Also news this week that Larry Boyd is suspended from the team indefinitely. I mean, look, I, I know a little bit about Larry's situation in that um, I know the coaching staff has sort of said, and not just sort of said, has said, you know, we need to make him give a crap. Uh, and I assumed that meant more than just football on a lot of levels. And apparently he hasn't been taking care of his business. I don't know if he specifically uh, stumbled into some a bad incident or something. Um, but Larry Boyd is a guy who arrived as a freshman last year from St. Louis and, and um, has the look of an NFL offensive lineman right away, 6'6". I think he was originally listed at 360. I think they probably got him down to 330, uh, 335. I mean, he's a big dude. And um, ah, we're going to hit a branch here. Ouch. Uh, farm trucks, you know, are different than your, <laughs> than your passenger vehicle, which you try to keep really good care of it's just sort of an inevitability with a farm truck that it's going to get scraped and banged and occasionally dented and it just got scraped um anyhow looking forward to that saturday night i'll have a column for sunday morning's paper be like old times writing on deadline i'm kind of looking forward to that and um like i said it'll be fun to see a lot of those guys and see what they've been up to for the last 10 11 years and and um, I know a lot of them have done very, very well. I ask specifically, this is more of a Decatur comment, but, you know, Marcus Wilkins was a wide receiver on that team. And Marcus Wilkins, I believe, caught the fourth and actually the game, what proved to be the game-winning touchdown in that game, really the highlight of his college career. Juice Williams threw four touchdown passes that day. And um, I asked, is Marcus going to be there? Because I have not seen him for a while and have kind of lost track of him. And they said they had not heard an RSVP. It doesn't mean that he won't show up. Uh, I would hope he is if anyone knows where he is and gets this message. And yeah, I would hope someone would encourage him because um, he's a he's a good guy. He was a part of that one of the biggest games in recent times, and it should be fun to see him too. So, anyhow, um, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Um, we'll talk next week. Monday is Big Ten Football Media Day. Monday and Tuesday, and. Um, and um, I'm going to be watching on TV. I'm not going up this year for the first time in probably forever. But um, I will um, go up and try to, uh, I mean, excuse me, I will be watching on the Big Ten Network and try to, to uh, listen in when Lovey makes his remarks. You know, but what you miss by not going, it's not like 
oh, you can get it all on TV. That's just not true. You miss the hall sessions. Uh, there'll be a good one with Josh. Um, there'll be a good one with Lovey. And then you miss the, um, uh, although they might include in their second day, some of the individual player interviews. Um, I know they were taking Nick Allegretti, and I believe they were taking Mikey Dudick and Jamal Milan um, up there to Chicago. So um, I'll be tuning in for that. And um, so we'll try to get another um, riding shotgun punched out here. We're, we're just, we're kind of treading water until we can get to training camp. Once training camp starts, and we can start watching some of these players, watching A.J. Bush, watching Cam Thomas, watching Karan Taylor, M.J. Rivers, watching some of these other freshmen that are coming in, um, and some of the returning guys, and see who steps up. Um, because now on that offensive line, you know, somebody else is going to have to play. Larry Boyd doesn't sound like he's going to be out there, at least for a while. So anyhow, um, we'll, we'll talk to you next week, and um, have a great weekend, everybody.